Most realtors don't work with investors. Investors are always asking me, what's it like working with realtors? So investors are always wanting to know what it's like working with realtors, right? Well, here's the thing. Just so everybody's aware, uh, it, the barrier to entry to becoming a realtor, very, very low, right? And then you get hired by all these brokerages. They pay commission only. Uh, so essentially, your big firms, like all the big name companies you've heard of, they will essentially hire anybody because it's just free income from them, right? There's really no uh, barrier keeping people who aren't qualified out. Now, staying a realtor, that's totally different, right? You're, you're super successful realtors. It's very hard. You have to be very knowledgeable and intense. Uh, to do that for a long period of time, right? But we get a lot of people out there uh, that are unqualified because the barriers are so low. Like getting your license is not hard, right? It's like 40 hours and you can do it online, okay? Uh, so with that said, right, there's like an 80% turnover rate in the industry and your best and brightest, right, they're going to go where the money is, okay? So, you know, typically on a buyer agent uh, commission, right, you're usually making around 3%, right? So uh, in the investor space, we're dealing with a lot of cheap properties, right? Investors like you, you guys love cheap properties, right? So do the math. What's 3% of 50K, right? Not a lot of money. Totally different than 3% of 400K, right? So when I'm working with other realtors, folks, uh, it's typically the bottom of the barrel realtors. And I know a lot of you out there are like, oh, why do I got to pay James up front to make me a video? Oh, other realtors will do it for free. Well, that's fine, motherfucker. Go ahead, man. Work with other realtors. I don't give a shit. I, I have a line of people working with me because it's very hard to find a highly skilled and successful agent working these types of neighborhoods. That's why uh, my numbers are so dramatically skewed towards the rest, right? These are the kind of people we're working with. Now, of course, I have redacted names and email addresses. I don't want to, like, blow the, uh, these people's lives up. But this is a real conversation. This is just some of the crap that's happened in the last couple months, right? Uh, this guy is realtor. He's selling a house. And uh, these are real emails that you could see. We're going back and forth. This dude actually owns the house. Uh, we sent him an offer at 35 k Okay, he's saying we got multiple offers. We tell him we'll go up to $40,000. This guy's response to me is, 40 is not, we have already. What the fuck? What in the fuck is that? What the fuck am I supposed to do with that? I don't even fucking understand what the fuck you're trying to say, bro. So... Of course, I explained that to him. I said, I had no idea what that's supposed to mean. Then he tells me they go back under contract. All right, so this is the kind of shit I'm dealing with. Then, then the property goes, goes back on the market. The guy reaches out to me again. His very next email to me is, we'll take the 35. What? This guy's actually the owner of this property, too. So we start at 35. You, you bid me up to 40. You give me some gerbil. And then you come back a week later. You don't realize... you. I gave you a $40,000 offer. You tell me you'll accept thirty five. So what do you think I did? I had the guy fucking sign my client's $35,000 offer. This motherfucker just flushed $5,000 out of down the toilet. Now we got this guy. Send him an offer, right? February 24th, okay? Send this guy an offer February 24th. We are now at March 15th. By the time I could get this guy to get it signed. This guy is just repeating in the same thread that he doesn't have the email, he's missing this, he eventually signs the other contract. How in the hell does it take three fucking weeks and my team sending you the same contract four times for you to sign it? Then there's this chick. I, I don't know what this chick's deal was. Uh, first, she's giving us issues over my, uh, my investor's pre-approval. She's saying there's no name. Uh, on the pre-approval, if she would just open her eyes and read the goddamn thing, she'd see his names on there. She'd also see his liquidities on there. Eventually, it seems like she figured that out because she just shot me like a slew of uh, just like gibberish emails talking to herself about finding the name. Just like total nonsensical stuff. So after we get through all of that, we finally agree on a price. And, uh, you know, it's like a Sunday at this point. So, uh at this point, it's a Sunday. I got just the contract signed. There's a few more disclosures and stuff that need to be signed. So I email her and I quote, Attached is a buyer signed copy of 132.5K purchase agreement for the address. 
Amanda CC'd will take over as main point of contract from here forward, and we'll get with you on Tuesday to schedule inspection and ensure we have title info as well as all necessary docs signed. Pretty simple, right? I, I couldn't have made that any more simple, right? It's like middle of the day Sunday, like non-business hours. Here's the paperwork. My assistant, man, she's going to take everything over for you on Tuesday, right? She, she, she was off that Monday, okay? This chick replies, we don't have any paperwork other than the purchase agreement. Yeah, I fucking know. That was literally my entire email. All I said in the email was the explanation of why you don't have everything, and I said you're about to get it. So she goes back and forth. I send it again. I tell her, hey, man, it'd be great if you'd actually read what I wrote. You guys starting to get the theme here? She couldn't read the pre-approval. Can't read this. So I send that to her again. So now she's still sending me complaints about this or that. We don't have this or that. Like, dude. I know. At this point, it's like towards the end of the day on freaking Sunday, man. I'm getting a little pissed at this chick. Like, bro, I got to let you know, like, do your goddamn job. Just do your job. I told you everything you had. We got the price you want. Get the thing signed. We'll finish up the details on Tuesday. No harm, no foul. Then the next morning, like this woman is like out of her mind. I don't like understand what thought process she had here. Her client got the money he wanted. I gave her all, all the information uh, she needed, explained to her everything's going to get signed. And then she gets so upset and emotional. She somehow convinces her client not to take the offer now. So she's talked her client out of $132,500 because her feelings got hurt and sends me this nonsensical email. Email. I have shared your email as well as your reviews uh, online with my seller. He will be declining the offer due to your unprofessional behavior. You are a disgrace to this profession. In 25 years, I have never been spoken to in this way. If your client wants this property, he will have to work through me only. Now, that's actually like a license violation, folks. Uh, there are like rules and regulations that we as uh, real estate professionals have to adhere of, but that's neither here nor there. Back to her email. You are a new agent. You will need to adjust your attitude if you want to succeed and sell higher end and do more volume than two mil a year. Do your job better. Good luck to you. You will need it. And I was like, wow, dude. I don't even know what this chick's talking about. I've been doing this stuff for uh, over a decade, and uh, I don't I don't even know where she's getting her numbers from. I'm, like, totally perplexed by this woman at this point. And I'm like, damn, she's trying to tell me how much I got to sell. Like, this lady must sell a lot of real estate because, like, I sell, like, a lot of real estate. So I looked her up, <laughs> and the numbers speak for themselves. Like, the woman, I don't even know where she's getting her data. Like, again, it goes back to the theme of this, like, you send her one thing, and she, like, can't read or something. So... <laughs> I, at this point, I'm pretty pissed at her, so I had to send her one email, and I just wanted to say, thanks for the advice, I greatly appreciate it. Then I included a screenshot of my recent production uh, compared to her <laughs> recent production. <laughs> Guys, this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about, right? I think when investors, they get in the space, uh, they think that there's going to be this, like, really high barrier to entry and everybody that they work with is going to have like a similar level of performance right like they're thinking like oh real estate professional they're licensed must be like a doctor everybody's super smart well the reality is there's good doctors and there's bad doctors right uh with real estate uh you're going to get those uh sway as well and like i said man the uh investor space where you guys are constantly looking at properties it's all at the bottom right the price points are small the commissions are small in reality like 95 percent of the agents you guys are dealing with in these low cost areas right they are typically making less money than a minimum wage employee and 88 percent of them are going to flame out of the business within the first 12 months of being an agent so i just wanted to give you guys that little tidbit and if you're out there and you find yourself an agent who's working with investors and has the ability to make you money do not waste time harping on them about them trying to earn a solid commission because i guarantee you they're going to laugh in your face when you try to price shop them against the competition. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.